You would never buy a house out of state without a home inspection. Why would you buy one without an analysis? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. What's up, folks? This is the MLS Search and Analysis Show. This is Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise, and just like I said at the top, dude, You'd never buy a property out of state uh, that you didn't get an inspection, right? You're out of state. Presumably, you didn't walk it yourself. You would never buy that without having somebody uh, who's unbiased that you trust walk it, right? That would be insane. Likewise, you should never, in, like, if you're intelligent, right, if you're a, an astute investor, you would never consider buying an investment property without somebody looking over it for you, right? Listing agents, right, that's the uh, real estate agent in the equation that works for the seller. They got one job. Their job is to sell that property, not sell it to you, to sell it. For who? The seller, right? Unless you're giving somebody money in this business, folks, they don't fucking work for you. I, th I think a lot of you guys out there seem to think like uh, these listing agents work for you. They fucking don't. Did you give them any money, motherfucker? No, you didn't. So they, they don't fucking work for you, right? All right, tangent over. And Simon, brother, it's not directed at you. It's just directed at, you know, Everybody, right? Simon, you're a good dude, though. You understand the game, right? And that's why you're here. That's why you purchased the 10-pack. That's why we do business together, because you understand how it goes, right? You need somebody to give you an unbiased take on this. And you can't see this photo that I want you to see uh, in the listing agreement, but I was looking at this property on Google Earth, and uh, what you see in the listing looks all pretty good, right? Uh, but... The Google Earth photo is just, in my opinion, incredibly important. So let me let me show you that real quick, bro. Let me let me get this to you because I think this is like the crux of the investment. Like people ask me, like, "Yo, is this a good deal? Is this a bad deal?" And like, dude, there's no such thing as like good or bad. It's like you gotta understand what you're buying, right? Like, it's, it could be good, could be bad. Now, <clears throat> here's the deal, bro. This is your house, right? This is a big old boy, right? You sent this to me, right? Five-unit apartment building. It's a big daddy. This is right next to it, okay? This is where your tenants have to drive to park. Now, do I think you can make money on this deal? Yes. Do I like this neighborhood for investing? Yes. Do I have the biggest fucking real estate portfolio in this fucking neighborhood? Yes. Do I have fucking eyeballs? Yes. Can my eyeballs see that this is not what I would consider nice? Yeah, I think anybody can, right? So you have to understand what you're buying. What you're buying is a low-income cash flow producing asset. Now, the address, 3136 West 50th, Cleveland, 44102, right? There's always good and bad with real estate. For every pro, there's a con, right? So we have a rough neighborhood, clearly. But what you get is you get a price-to-rent ratio uh, that's going to be, you know, much different than what you'd get in nicer areas, right? They have listed it at 189.9, and I think that's too high given the condition of the building, condition of the neighborhood, right? I think, Lewis, this deal – or I'm sorry, I think Simon. Sorry, brother. I just did a video for a guy named Lewis earlier. Simon, I think this uh, deal would make sense for you at 175 k because despite its negatives, dude, it's kicking off money, bro, right? We got 650 900 600 775 and 480 coming in, 3385 So the thing is bringing in freaking $40,620 a year. Of the 40620 I think you're going to spend about half of that under normal operating circumstances, right? You're going to be spending an average of $6,000 on CapEx, repairs, maintenance, vacancy, and non-payment, right? Back to the uh, Google shot, right? Look, it's D-grade neighborhood, dude. D-grade. It's my favorite D-grade neighborhood in Cleveland because there's a little place called Metro Health, large healthcare company. They're investing a billion dollars into this neighborhood, right? They're going to invest into low-income housing, right? Uh, but 
currently, right now, so I think there's you know some good speculation to this neighborhood, but right now, dude, this is still a reality of what we're dealing with, right? You know, I in case anybody out there is watching my show and they don't really understand how this game works, like, if I'm a prospective tenant and this is how I got to get into this home, this is what I see, you could bet your ass that I am probably a higher risk, lower income tenant, right? There's not a lot of people that have bachelor's degrees from four-year universities that are living in these apartments. You guys have to understand that. Like when you're dealing with this socioeconomic class, you're going to get people that are on government subsidies, uh, that are one missed paycheck away from eviction, that are one flat tire away from losing their job, things of that nature. So when you invest in these neighborhoods, we can make a lot of cash, but you got to know there's going to be issues. That's why, of course, we want you to hold back, right? You get the money, right? You get that 6 k a year, right? That comes to you when things are rolling good, but I want you to know that 6 k that comes into you, uh, that's fool's gold, right? Because you're going to need to save that for repairs and maintenance, right? When these people move out, they don't leave the units in the best condition, right? Vacancy and non payment. If you think you could buy a five unit apartment building that looks like that and you're not going to evict people, you're out of your mind because you will. And then, of course, capital expenditures, right? The listing agent, you know, they work for the sellers. They said it's mostly turnkey, but look, dude, it's an old building. I could tell you just looking at the thing, dude, you're not going to, like, find, like, everything super-duper brand new in there. Like, yeah, it, it, it looked pretty good from the photos, right? And, like, in the basement, things were, like, not super-duper old, but this isn't, like, brand new, man. This is probably around 10 years old, maybe in, the like, the 5 to 7 range, right? But these last 15 years, every 15 years, you got to drop a G. Every 30 years, you got to drop three Gs, right? So don't expect uh, to come out of your inspection report where the inspector tells you, oh, man, this is, like, the greatest property ever. No, you are you guys get these inspection reports, and some of you guys, like, freak out. Like, dude, it's a 100-year-old building in a low-grade neighborhood, right? And you guys sometimes, like, I've even had investors where they get, like, a a 90-page inspection report because you bet your ass on a building this big and this old. It's going to be like 90 pages. And they're like, oh, man, I got the inspection report. Uh, how much does it cost to fix it? Fix what? It's fucking 90 pages, motherfucker. What do you, what do you mean fix? Fix what? To what standard, right? Like, to, are you asking me to fix it to the standard of a fucking McMansion built in 2021 uh, where, where, you know, just a bunch of fucking people living on the cul-de-sac driving their goddamn fucking high on days. Like, what, what are we talking about here? This is a hundred-year-old low-income property. So the, the inspection report, brother, it's going to look rough, right? Uh, we need to fix it up to a level that allows it to meet local, state, and federal housing codes, right? Building codes, right? Can't get no building code violations. That's number one. Number two, we need to get it to a level that allows us to put government subsidized tenants in there, right? Because that is the key to these types of investing, man. Your tenant base is difficult. Your tenant base is tough. Your tenant base is very close to not being able to pay you rent. You need to get that government subsidized rent to survive in these type of neighborhoods. So... Hey lenders, are you looking to be part of our referral program? If so, send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. <laughs> Simon, if you can get down with government subsidized rent and know that you're probably going to have some riffraff happening, and of course, uh, we're going to make shows on it. We're definitely going to put that on the Tennis from Hell show. These are the types of properties that uh, give us content for that show. I think it could be a money maker because I believe at $175,000 uh, with my projected numbers, it should be a 12.3 cap. And, of course, if you want to finance it, commercial financing much different than residential. It's not simple where it's just like, yo, 30-year loan, 25% down. It's going to vary your down payment. Oftentimes, uh, commercial lenders, they want to see historical data. And I'm going to tell you this, right? My favorite type of multifamily property in regards to financing is a four unit because it's the biggest building you can get residential financing. This is a five unit, so it's the smallest building that commercial lenders are going to underwrite. So it's going to be the most difficult to underwrite, and oftentimes your sellers are not going to be super sophisticated sellers with all this data that you might want or expect. So uh, as far as your financing goes, I would imagine you're going to have a tough time picking this up on financing 
for anything less than a down payment of like 40 to 50, maybe 60 percent if you can get it financed, because I think it's going to be an uphill battle uh, to pick to pick up uh, the necessary documents that an underwriter is going to want. Because remember, it's an uphill battle. You just got to understand when you're talking to that lender, their underwriting department really doesn't want 100 year old five unit buildings. So. Again, if you're asking me if it's a good deal or if it's not a good deal, the answer is it depends. Do I think making uh, a 12 cap uh, in Cleveland right now in 2021 is a good return? Hell fucking yeah. Do I think this property has a lot of things that are going to make life more difficult than a brand new investor would anticipate? Hell yeah. And that's why when you guys find deals, you come to me. You come on this show, and I cut it to you straight. Lewis, you want to do the deal? I will happily represent you. You don't want to do the deal? You want to send me some new deals? That's cool, too, brother. It's all about you. Everybody else, if you like what you saw today, shoot us an email, give us your number, and we will talk to you about getting you your own set of videos just like Simon. I think I called him Lewis again, didn't I? Lewis, Simon, I don't know why I keep calling you Lewis, bro. My bad. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.